Hello everybody and welcome back to the Okami walkthrough. We're here in Kusa Village and... Oh dear, things are not looking good. And as you can see, our ink pots are getting drained. There's no actual cursed zone, but things are not good here at all. And pretty much everyone is depressed. It's because of this massive sense of evil in the area. We can still do stuff, but it's nowhere near as nice as it should be. Now, now that we're here, we can actually get a new weapon, which is that wonderful, wonderful... I think it's Infinity Judge. It's a reflector, as you can probably tell, and it's wonderfully powerful. Obviously, since we've literally just got it, we are going to use gold dust on it, because why the hell not? And we are going to upgrade everything. Annoyingly, that's not going to do much for us, because once our ink pots are drained, our ink pots are drained, and we're not going to get anywhere. But still. Now, Kusa Village. It's, well, its Japanese name is Kusanagimura which literally translates to uh, Grass Village. So Kusa means grass, so that's why you get the Kusa Nagimo meaning Grass Village. In all likelihood, oh hello Susano, in all likelihood the Kusa Nagimura is a reference to the legendary sword Kusa Nagi no, Kusa Nagi no Tsurugi, which is the grass cutting sword that could control the wind. Apparently it was originally called Ame no Murakumo no Surugi, which is the sword of the gathering clouds of heaven, but its name was later changed to the more popular Kusanagi no Surugi. Basically, the Kusanagi is the name of the sword that is used in the legend of Orochi. Unfortunately, it's probably not going to be used quite in the instance that it should be. And here we have Mr. Bamboo, who I absolutely adore. His uh, Japanese name is Takitori no Okina, which I'm not quite sure what that means, but I would assume Mr. Bamboo is a pretty decent translation of it. And what's absolutely wonderful is that his character and the plotline that he will go on to have is based on the tale of the bamboo cutter, which is also known as Princess Kaguya, which is kind of, well, it is considered the oldest extant Japanese prose narrative, and it's a 10th century Japanese folktale, and it's incredibly popular. If you have managed to see Studio Ghibli's The Tale of Princess Kaguya, that is a rendering of that that fairy tale. It's basically a fairy tale. And it's heartbreaking, but it's beautiful. And Pretty much, Mr. Bamboo's story will follow that. As you will see. But we will leave Mr. Bamboo for a while because here we have Princess Fuse. Now, uh, the whole, like, you would hope that the Okami wiki would have a decent amount of information on Princess Fuse, or Fusehime as her Japanese name is, but it doesn't. Annoyingly, she's afflicted by a horrendous blue imp who can fly, but seeing as we don't have access to our wonderful celestial brush techniques, we have to do wolf kung fu, which is hilarious. I love it. But we referenced to Princess Fuse, um, 
So you can see in part of her design uh, that what, what, what looks like dog ears is actually just her hairstyle. Apparently initially she looked a little more doggish, like Lady Hudson from the Sherlock Hound series, but they went for a more human look in the end. The reason being for that is because Princess Fuse is the leader of some canine warriors. As she will tell us as soon as we have rescued her from the force of these evil demons. Oh, I'm slightly depressed by how poorly I'm doing in some of these battles. It's like, come on, I'd like to do well, but sometimes it's just not going to happen. Either way, we are restored to power, thank God. Now also what's quite cool is that the eight orbs that are surrounding her all have kanji, which you can read. So there's charity, justice, courtesy, knowledge, faith, but there's also loyalty, but that's sometimes behind her, faith, attentiveness, and obedience. And they rotate in a circular motion. There is an important reason for the, the kanji on those orbs, but we will discuss that in a moment. Because what Princess Fuse is talking about is the Divine Wind is gone, the horrible monster has taken over, and that horrible monster is the Crimson Helm, which Susano actually mentioned when we were back in Agatha Forest. He couldn't actually figure out what it was called, he was just calling it the Crimson something or other. But it's the Crimson Helm, and it's taken over the Gale Shrine, and yeah kind of need to do something about that. And now Princess Fuse is mentioned in the Satomi Canine Warriors. Now originally, they weren't the Canine Warriors at all. They were just the Eight Warriors. They were all humans, and the designer was having some difficulty with their design and put them on the back burner for a while. By the time they got back to them, the game scenario had changed to have them all as dogs. They were quite surprised, but they included a variety of breeds, Japanese and Western, which is really quite cool. And you can see all of the designs in the art book, and they are so cool. <laughs> We'll talk about each one as we come across them. But what's really cool is that the eight kind the eight canine warriors are based on the Nanso Satomi Hakenden, which is a Japanese epic novel in 106 volumes by Kyokite Bakin, written and published over a period of nearly 30 years between 1814 and 1842. Uh, the title has been translated as Eight Dog Chronicles, Tale of Eight Dogs, or Biographies of Eight Dogs. Because that's basically related to them. So, it's the story of eight samurai half-brothers, all of them descended from a dog and bearing the word dog in their surnames. And they have adventures with themes of loyalty and family honour, as well as Confucianism, Bushido, and Buddhist philosophy. Where Princess Fuse comes into this story, however, is that Princess Fuse is the mother of the Eight Samurai. Whereas here she is the owner of the Canaan Warriors. So it's a little bit of a twist, but it's really quite cool that that is the case. And it's a very neat little kind of mythological folktale tie. Well, it's not even really folktale, because it's a novel from the 1800s. That's remarkably recent. And, I mean, it has turned up in numerous things. It's the same with um, The Tale of the Bamboo Cutter. I mean, a primary example is uh, Kiba Inazuka in Naruto. He's entirely based on 
the Legend of the Eight Samurai stuff. But here we have one of the canine warriors, Ko. Now, Ko is a collie, which is a British dog for herding sheep. Which is... I'm, I'm quite happy that we've run into a British dog first. That, that makes me quite proud. And Ko's... Uh, virtue of Confucianism is attentiveness. Now pretty much once you've fed Ko, it'll run back. And uh, that's all that source is. For pretty much all of the dogs that are in Kusa Village, there's five of them, uh, all you need to do is feed them. And they will come with you. Unfortunately, not all of them are still in Kusa Village, which is kind of depressing. Now, I believe... Okay, maybe slightly wrong. In completely the things, because in the game itself, uh, Ko has the Wisdom Orb, and Ko stands for Wisdom. But... In the art book, it's called the Canine of Attentiveness. And that's also what that orb is called, although it's a different orb. Because the purple orb is courtesy in the art. Yeah, it all makes very, very little sense. <laughs> though it's, his Japanese name is Koko, which is Dog of Filial Piety. Now apparently, well, filial piety is the correct relationship between the superior and the inferior in the mark of social hierarchy. And to be more specific on its breed, it's a rough collie, which is from Scotland rather than England in particular. Now I believe that initially, Carl was probably going to be female, because in this arc, uh, the dog which links to Ko is called Shino, and it's a female warrior. Either way, here we have Rei, or Rai. And Rai stands for honour. And Rai is a pointer, another British dog. Um, basically, uh, uh, pointers are a breed of hunting dog used to retrieve fallen birds. So, and the markings also suggest that he's an English pointer, which is quite nice. Now, Rai's name is Raiko in the Japanese. Um, and his, so that means dog of propriety or dog of etiquette. So it links quite neatly into the idea of honour. Although in the art book it's courtesy. This is so confusing, it's annoying. <laughs> now if we cut open this bamboo, which is a massive link to the tail of the bamboo cutter because he finds a girl called Kaguya, or names a, a girl that comes from a bamboo shoot, Kaguya. It's adorable. We then have Chi, or Ki, um, who has the Knowledge Orb. 
and she is a Japanese Spitz, which is a breed most often seen as a pet or companion dog. I believe that... Well, she, she is a female dog, and you can see the artwork that they were going to have for her in the art book. It's quite cool. Uh, her Japanese name is Chiko, which means Dog of Knowledge. And she has the squeakiest voice of any of the canine warriors, and that's possibly due to her being the only female member. Originally, they were going to have... I'm pretty sure it's two females, the other one being Ko. But obviously that changed for some bizarre reason. Now I believe that we have one more dog to get in Kusa Village, and, well at least, that we can get from doing all this feeding. And he is right here, but let's just have a little chat to the flower girl first. <laughs> so this is Shin, who is a boxer, which is a sort of medium bulldog breed from Germany. Now, his orb is the Faith Orb. Although... Uh... Oh, that's actually quite nice. The Japanese states that it's Faith as well, so I'm quite happy with that. His Japanese name is Shinko, which means Dog of Trust. So, yeah, as I said, pretty much all of the dogs that you meet in Kusa Village are Western breeds. The only kind of exception to that is the Japanese Spitz, which is Chi. It's very hard to remember all of the names of the damn canine warriors. In general, they're very unimportant. I mean, they're quite important to the plot right now, but it's very unimportant to try and remember all of their names, because... Oh dear god, that's not happening. <laughs> Either way, here we have Tay, or Tai. I believe it's probably Tay. Um, so he has the Brotherhood or or the orb sounds for Brotherhood. And he is a Tosa Ken, which is a Japanese fighting dog. Now, Tei stands for Dog of Brotherhood or Dog of Respectfulness, so that's where you get the, the Brotherhood link. And now I'm incredibly confused as to what the uh, entire thing is telling me. Oh, okay, now I get it. So, Tay in the Japanese version is the canine of obedience, because they just call that game dog Tosa. But yes, we have to fight him, as you can see we are doing right now. I'm being a bit of an idiot, because if you go through these fights without using some of the sakes that you can use to like increase your attack power, these things are going to go incredibly slowly because they are on very equal footing to you and these fights are not easy because good god are the canine warriors powerful they're just rather lazy in the grand scheme of things <laughs> now something quite cool to point out is that in terms of the skeletons of the models all of the canine warriors are technically recycled because they share the same skeleton and attack animations to Amaterasu. That may sound like it, they're being lazy, but the thing is, is that that's actually just a decent technique of saving time. Because, and also it means that you can have optional characters, because 
once you complete the game, you actually gain the ability to sort of play as the Canine Warriors. So it's it's just a whole character thing. Hideki Kamiya pretty much does it in the majority of these games. Did it in Mutual Joe. They've done it in Bayonetta, done it in Wonderful 101. It's just a nice, simple way of making things easier to code, really. But, as Princess Fuse says, there are three canine warriors still left to find. So, yeah, we're going to have to go searching for them, aren't we? <laughs> and if you look, one is in an area we haven't been to before, one's in Agatha Forest and one's in Kamiki. So, we're going to have to head there and find them. Let's hope they're okay. 